do me a favor because you know how Facebook's weird. Tag me on my own page. Uh, I can't. It's live now. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it. This is not. Hello, people of the interwebs. There, there we is. go. I'm yeah. hurting it. Hey, guys. I'm waiting for people to join. So you should probably explain where you're at. Yes. I'm in the seventh circle of hell. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I am at Chris Spangle's little studio. But little. Yeah, it's actually very fancy. How are you going to punk out look my studio like that? Do we look fancy right now? I <laughs> feel. Your paper I know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to do like a little live today. I'll save it. Might do some fun stuff with it. Um, and we'll wait for you guys to join. Uh, so, yes, I'm here in Indianapolis, which is a lovely city. Thank you. Yes. Um, saw some cool architecture, met with some Liberty people, and I got to be really fancy with um, the fancy microphone. However, I refused the fancy headphones because hair. So, well, oh, yeah, pretty. you want to you make sure your hair looks good. Yes, so. which as evidenced by your hair. Oh, I have perfect hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have one. You're good like the Just for Men Club hair. I have like... <laughs> One good physical quality, and it's this magnificent <laughs> hair, and I get it cut at great clips. Can I really... you do one of these? <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Thanks. So it's just me right now. Hi. I just want to be able to share it with my Facebook. If anybody wants to ask some questions. Uh... <laughs> I'll be right oh, back. Lord, that's me. I got to turn my – Chris, I'm professional. I got to turn my sound off. That's high. That's an echo. Um yeah, so we're going to do something really fun in the beginning once we get some people in. Um, and it might take me a little scrolling through. I did go and unblock some people. We're unblock. I unblock some people. I'm just excited. I've never been on a Facebook Live where people have made f creepy comments before. Are you ready? Uh, oh, I've never, I'm ready for it, yeah. You know, I don't get as many um, redheads rule. We damn, do rule. Damn, the redhead is <laughs> sex A. Hi, baby. Yeah. <laughs> already starting I know, I, I know that guy's name yeah i've seen him before yeah um so we're going to in dramatic fashion but we're going to wait a few minutes because i want to get at least 30 or 40 people in here well um, explain who i am so your your okay. feed knows who i am yes this is true i'm sorry because i'm hosting you and i've yeah. been interviewed as of late and not so chris spangle is the most badass celebritarian that there is on the planet. He's known for breaking the law and being a full-blooded anarchist. <laughs> He's the, he hosts the We Are Libertarian Network, which is a really big podcasting network. Tell us a little bit about uh, We Are Libertarians, Chris. Yeah, I started it seven years ago in 2012. And, um, yep, that is an ovation launch pad, Colin. Uh, that's what I, I play our intro on. So we're a podcast first and foremost – which you can listen anywhere, like us on any platform, uh, watch us on YouTube, all that good stuff. And uh, we we really talk to new, like what we do is we talk about current events and we talk about like regular life. We don't we don't go as deep into the weeds as you may go or mm -hmm. Tom Woods may go or Mance Raider, for instance. So we really try to target people who, like if you're trying to convert somebody to libertarianism, ours is a safe podcast. It's funny. It's got you know, we, we just explained what Brexit is, um, you know, so we, we really try to talk to newer people. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's, that's sort of our goal. And we try to do that through explaining the news and explaining the libertarian opinion on Brexit, the libertarian opinion on impeachment, the libertarian opinion on, you know, and, and kind of doing some of those, um, foundational conversations. Mm -hmm. Uh, we we're doing a debate series right now with the great Hody Johns. Yes. Shout out to Hody, my yes. homeboy, big fan of O'Doul's apparently. And Hody is uh, doing a great job right now hosting a debate series between all of the various, uh, libertarian candidates for president. He's reached out to all the Republicans, all the Democrats, independents, greens, but only libertarians have responded to surprisingly a show named what? Uh, we are libertarian. You should think about changing it to "We are Greens." <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I've trust me. I thought about changing it because I I get tired of libertarians. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be beholden to libertarians anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, based here in Indianapolis, and you know, we have about forty people and involved in in various assets. About to launch a magazine. We have video series, a, a set of podcasts like the Brian Nichols Show, the Boss Hog of Liberty. Um, Tad Talk, so a, a lot of different stuff, and we've uh, been 
just building and building and building over many, many years. That's awesome. So. And I think, um, well, I met some of those hosts last night. They're mm-hmm. really cool people, interesting people. And um, you're probably one of the largest uh, libertarian podcast networks yeah. out there. You, we you have, need to toot your own horn a little bit. We have about 10,000 listeners. We're, you know, we're, I would say we're in the top 10 at least, top five maybe. Um, top one. <laughs> I'm, well, it's the best one. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, th- there are some that have better heat, like that that uh, rascal Dave Smith. But mm-hmm. um, you know, That's so we we've we've just I've been amazed at how. So I worked for the liber. I started in radio, and talk radio, and then I went to f- work for the Libertarian Party of Indiana as their full time executive director from 2008 to 2012. And in 2012, I started this as a way to reach out to college students. And uh, it morphed into a, a long-term show that's been going for seven years. I went on to work for the Advocates for Self-Government, the quiz people as their marketing director for a while, and now I work in radio again. And, um, you know, along the way, it's just kind of turned into something that I, I was so blown away 70 people listened to us that first year. You know, we got to the first year, and it was 72 people. And, I and like, I look at Creighton and Galt, the co-host at the time, I was like, we're really turning into something now. Uh, One of so, these numbers. So yeah, it's, it's been great. And I've met a lot of great... Uh, uh, the best thing about the last couple of years has been meeting a lot of other podcasters like Mark Clare, Lions of Liberty, mm-hmm. Johnny Adams of, you know, or, excuse me, Johnny Rocket yes. of Launchpad Media, you know, and unfortunately Roger Paxton of Pork... Of, uh, oh, no. uh, why is everybody always hating on him? Of Lava Flow and Pork... Well, <laughs> R- Roger's an asshole, that's why. Okay, uh, well... No, Roger's a, Roger's a really good dude. He just is abrasive. He's mm-hmm. he's your typical black and yellow anarchist. Right. He's he's a really good person, but also just insufferable to to interact <laughs> with. So I think we're gonna touch on that in a little bit, aren't we? Yeah, we can. Okay. We'll talk about whatever. Um, but I am a <laughs> Trisha is one of the bravest people in the liberty movement because she puts up with you people. <laughs> Uh, her Facebook page is a bastion of just betaness. <laughs> <laughs> and I just watch it, and sometimes I just, I'm like, I can't believe you said that. Or you'll send me messages <laughs> from guys, and it's just like, we we need to talk, fellas. <laughs> it's it's a quite amazing, though, and I've come to have a lot thicker skin occasionally. It will bother me. Um but now I just see it as pure entertainment. Yes. Well, I wouldn't say that because you'll only encourage the behavior. I think what we ought to do is read some of these so guys know what not to do and not how to talk to someone. Right. So we're not right. going to take the super crass stuff today. We're going to take the goofy. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. So we're gonna going to do it in dramatic. The, I'm yeah. going to do a dramatic reading. You'll you'll play yourself. I will play <laughs> the incel. The, no. the the incel that is in your in your thread. Yes, but uh, you might want to. You can. Uh, Drop some of your um, credential, like where do you want people to go? Because I'm, like I said, it's going to take me a minute to go okay. find. Yeah, this go, stuff. go. Uh, h- hand me that phone. Let me look at some of the comments. Okay, yes, answer Let some questions. See, Who has questions for Chris? Um, I don't think anybody does. Honestly, I, actually, we're getting some engagement. Um, let's see. Hody Johns is our greatest asset. He is a great guy, and I love Hody. Uh, get Ron Paul. You, uh, we had Ron Paul. We interviewed him, and we actually crashed our website. We had 114,000 people listen to that Amaze. episode because he talked about Rand Paul, and this was like 20, uh, 20, uh, gosh, what, what, it, what was it, 2014 ish? Mm-hmm. And so he was talking about his son and the raw deal he got. So Ron Paul gets you numbers. Um, Jessica Late, she just tuned in for the hot redhead. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, this is going to be some ginger madness right there. Right, exactly. Uh, liberty needs no rulers. It's time to evolve to direct democracy. Um, mm, whoa, only... so disagree with that. He's uh, he's from France. We're uh. not. We don't <laughs> listen. What you need to know, Frenchman. He's he's talking about the yellow vest. Uh, we don't we don't take the French seriously in America. <laughs> <laughs> their food. I take their food pretty seriously. So uh, keep up the good work. Love your show, and we'll watch the rest later. Aww. So keep, <laughs> keep going. Um, well, that is funny. We have a co-host named Dakota Davis, and this is not that Dakota Davis watching. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, settling in with popcorn. Good old, good old Dennis. You met oh, Dennis last night. Yes, I yeah. did. Yes. So hello, Dennis. Would you like to say anything nice about Dennis? Um. Yes, he taught me something. He did. Yes. What did he teach you? 
He teach the rest of us. He taught me that there is an exemption. Federal employees, and I know that you know that Congress can have an exemption to um, <laughs> your reading. I'm already, already reading. I'm it's so excited. Bad, yeah. Christopher. Sorry, I, I know. Um, so there are federal employers that are exempt from paying Social Security into yeah. Social Security. Uh, I knew that Congress is exempt from like the Obamacare mm -hmm. um, mandate. But I just find that so amazing. We've created such a special class of citizens and it inspired me to write a post when I was talking to him about how we call them public servants. Right. And I, <laughs> I have never once heard of a servant that steals from its masters and subjugates them and gets away with it. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we celebrate them. There's no foreplay with you. You're yes. just right, right into the anarchy. Right in there. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'll try. Okay, I'll play my, my cute little pragmatic. Okay, I'm just kidding. You, you be yourself. All right, so we ha we have the first one. Don't don't give their name I out. Won't. Okay, because these I'm not I'm not doing the dirty or like nasty or death threatening right. message. These are just the ones that are funny. So Wait I won't a give minute. out names. Repeat that. Dirty, nasty, or death threats. I just won't repeat those on air. Those get deleted or put. But these are just fun ones that I found quite humorous. Maybe How many a little. Of those on? do you get? A, a a month. It goes in fluxes. <laughs> um, I've noticed there's a lot more penis on Instagram. <laughs> just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of switched over to there. Uh -huh. Facebook Messenger used to be so awful, but I do get a lot of now this is marked as abusive. Uh, so I think they've got some kind of algorithm down right. on like people whacking Good. their wieners and Messenger. Um, <laughs> so this is not PG for the children. Thank uh, you. Okay. So no, these ones are. So we're going to start with this fellow. Okay. And Chris will be internet fellow. Okay. And, okay. Happy New Year, love. How are you? A pause means that a lot of time went by. Yes. It could be days or weeks or months. Happy New Year, love. How are you? Good, thanks. I am fine. Are you Irish? No. Are you Scottish? Because you have red hair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love Scottish Lassie. Are you single? Uh, a few days go by. Hi, love. Another day goes by. Good morning, love. The next day, hi. The day after that, hi, love. The day after that, oh, no, five days later, hey, sweetie. Ten days later, good morning. <laughs> the next day, hey, sweetie. While I appreciate your perseverance, I'm not interested in conversation. Have a great day. Okay, bye. <laughs> a month later, hello. <laughs> <laughs> like, you think at a certain point you get the hint. <laughs> How do you not get that? I've seen this pattern where it's hi, 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 hi for days on end. Like you don't get it. Th those are my favorite. Um, I told you that there's there's four slash five types of men in the liberty movement. <laughs> um, yes, these messages, Luke, are from me. Everyone <laughs> we're reading are all from me too, Trisha. <laughs> We're just reading my outgoing box yeah. to libertarian females. Oh, Lord. No, um, oh, that that's some lady trying to sell me something that's not. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I told you it would take. It's hard to get up through that's these. That's okay. But, yeah, so I'll, I'll go over while I'm searching. Um, what's funny is the, the five types of libertarian men are, number one, decent men, which are the majority. Okay. Right. okay. A lot of my good friends. Number two are dick pick men. Which I've come to realize. Oh, sorry. Can't mean, hear me good. Didn't mean to smack you in the face with that. <laughs> Abusive right. libertarian friends. Um, no, and they're the types that they're not actually interested in a date. That's just they just do that for their jollies. So um, they're just sending you the the pictures just for yeah, you know. or like the masturbation video is a new thing. But they don't do that actually to get a response. Yeah. Yeah, they just I do that just because they're getting off on doing that. Right. The number three would be the mean. So this is uh, something I've noticed. They'll text you. This is why you're stupid or you don't understand this point. Like that will be the way they start. The mean, me, M E A N. Yes. Okay. Yes. Not, the mean, not meme. Not me, me. Oh, I'll always take memes. Always send me memes. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a way for them to get you to respond. So right. those do want a response, and right. you know they think. I guess there some guy wrote a book about picking up chicks. Yeah, it's called the game, and he's since written a book saying. I didn't mean for it to turn into what it meant. And nagging is what it's called, where I'm going, you know, women are just on such a pedestal. Right. And they're so entitled that you got to be mean to them to knock them down in their place. And you stand out amongst the crowd when you really treat them like dirt because every guy just treats them like a beta male and gives them what they want. That's sort of the working theory with that guy. Yeah. 
And I think, didn't he backtrack on that a he little did. bit? Yeah, no, he wrote a whole book saying, listen, this is not what this was intended to do. It was intended to to be kind of a study of the pickup artist scene. Right. And, you know, now the publisher put it in, like, Bible covering, basically. like, And so <laughs> it marketed the book really well, but it turned into, like, this whole red pill type, you know, which which is sort of evolved from that pickup artist scene. So... um. What's the what's the third or fourth? The third type. Okay, so that would be the so mean would recap. be the third. Okay, so number one is the decent men, which n- they are the majority of men in the movement. Just okay. putting that out there. Okay, you're just not going to hear so much from them because they're not the ones that right. have time to sit and like argue with you all right. day long. The number two would be the pervies. The pervies. Yeah, okay. which generally are of boomer age. If I'm going to be honest. Okay. <laughs> Number three would be the mean. I'm going to try to get you to respond and tell you why you're stupid because you're a woman. Okay. Number four would be the sads. Oh. This would be a case of the sads. Okay. Sorry, why aren't you answering me? No, that was the previous guy, which okay. I'm going to find another one now. I, I think. Okay, bye. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, the sads um, are respond. Why won't you respond? And, and then when you do and you don't, they, they're like, you're a horrible person because you didn't respond and I hate my life. Right. There's quite a few of I'm those. I'm going to emotionally. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use emotion to get attention because I don't. Feel yes. It. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I'm going to kill myself. Pretty much. Right. I actually had one of those. Right. Um. I'm really upset, Chris, because I'm not finding where we were looking before because the, of the way the that message that, request goes back I think in. That was. No. Hold no, on. No, this is right regular messenger, which is people I actually like to talk to. Okay. Was it archive threads? It might be. Let's try that one. Yeah, keep going down. You're better with the mouses. Um, you all gotta these use techni- two fingers. You, the technicals. You gotta use two I, fingers. I make. Listen, there's boys that do these things. I, I know. <laughs> this is very technical. You're, the incels are so mad right now. <laughs> um, I want you to. Uh, here, well, I think that's that's where we were, right? I here, think so. Yeah. so. So go ahead and answer some so, questions. So let Arlo. me. This is from. Uh, this is from the comment section. Greetings from Maine! Matt Hatter, I declare as the living man that we are all labeled and identified as surety through the straw man fiction and all that we are taught is scripted and the world is a stage and the leaders on the board and nothing more than meat suits selling a script. He, he was in all caps. Well, okay, dude, stop yelling. <laughs> Number two, I agree completely with everything you just said. Uh, <laughs> there are two classes of men, critical <laughs> thinkers and order followers. <laughs> Matt, you were intense, bro. I like your passion, Matt. Yeah. Um, let's see. I hope the audio sounds good. Uh, let's see here. How to use Facebook to pick up chicks. Uh, Andrew writes, I just think you're cute, interesting, and I don't like media and government making everyone idiotic with lies. Well, I would quite agree, and thank you for the kind compliment, unless you were complimenting Sir Spangle. That. Maybe he thinks right. you're cute. You guys cute. really need to specify who, <laughs> if you think I'm cute or she's cute, who's the hot redhead. You really need to get this together. Could you here. please? Yeah. We should get a poll going, Chris. Uh, <laughs> I get messages from women. They start all nice, then beg for money. LOL. <laughs> um, okay, I did have an experiment. I'm not going to lie. Um, and I believe my friend, our mutual friend, Elaine Joan. Yeah, I love <laughs> Elaine. Yeah. She's like, just send them a money request if they send you a dick pic. That's a great idea. So I would just do that and put it in archive. And then occasionally I would get a uh, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> it was never the full amount that I asked for. You get added to a lot of groups. Uh, yeah, I just get rid of them. Um, how, how do we, what happened here? I, I'm really, I'm kind of upset because... I'm not finding where we were before when I was looking. Yeah. Um, All right, but we can go out. into a keep topic. Going. Keep or, going. Okay. You, you keep clicking out of it. You got to not. Stop. No, there's two different ones, Chris. Okay. Dude, that's regular people. Okay. This is the regular box. Yeah. Keep going down. Okay. We're going to like what? November? <laughs> For some little, a little Thanksgiving sugar? <gasps> that was the one. I think that was in the archive, though. Uh, See if there's another question and I'll go back down to it. What was the full? What was the full amount you asked for? Um, usually a thousand. <laughs> You're welcome, Trish. I run a morning show myself. First time here. <gasps> Wait, oh, is that our new friend? That's our excited our friend, friend Matt. Matt? Yep. Matt, you can give a shout out to your show. Yeah, post in the comments your show, Matt. <laughs> uh, this uh, this guy, <laughs> the yellow vest America guy, just is still going. Like, yeah, we get it. You're French. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> Christy, Christy Avery says both of us are cute. Aw, thanks, Christy. All right, fifth Adam. This is a funny comment from Adam. Uh, fifth type drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know what? That's probably true. <laughs> uh, Karen wants to know how much she should charge. Um, I would say the full amount. I think you can request ten thousand, and mm-hmm. since I'm a capitalist pig, go for ten thousand. All right. Come on, guys. Ask some questions. Yes, we're, we're, we want some questions because I'm a tech failure. She's she's scrolling through these. Don't do you, don't do not click that. Oh no! Wait, I think I figured it out. Oh. If not, if I can't find it in a minute, we'll just go into like the next topic of discussion. Uh, Karen doesn't get pictures. <laughs> Every I'm not gonna say send her pictures. That'd be mean. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't. No. I also have a public profile too. So and I have like I'll just add anybody who's looks like a, interested in the libertarian stuff. So that would probably be why. There you go. That's perfect. That's the one. Oh, we uh, found it. There we go. Uh, that one right there. March 11th. We want to read this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, March 11th writes. The world is flat. Facts. God is real. So is the Bible. (laughs) Why didn't you respond? (laughs) Uh, March 2nd. Cute. (laughs) Is there anything else? No. No. That's it. No. Oh, where's the Thanksgiving guy? Uh, You got to keep going back to Thanksgiving. Sup, sexy. Good old Feb 9th. Oh, yeah. That one got me. Hmm. I like the one where it says, hey, girl, I'd like to add you as a friend, but I'm at 5,000. I'll be back later. <laughs> Did one. you recent? Oh, no, that's not one. Uh, so it, go up a little bit. Go ahead. You Just take control of the situation. Right. Just alpha the All hell right. out of this right. shit, I'm Chris. taking over. You're not going right. to um, Let's just, uh, oh, that guy's boring. Uh, what can I say? Oh, this uh, is good. To go this is a good up. one? Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, I got to read this because I do believe Let's, I responded oh, just for fun. You did. So <laughs> oh, even his name is annoying. So <laughs> November 12th writes, hello, friendly Facebook asshole here. How are you? Good. Thanks. Are you, though? Don't say it unless you mean it. Wink, tongue, LOL, JK. Um, yeah, I'm good. Laughy face. LOL. Okay, just checking. <laughs> You know, you indecisive females, LOL, JK. I tend to be, like, personal here, open and transparent, so yeah, good luck with that, LOL. (laughs) You know, I kind of like to make actual friends, LOL, as opposed to virtual enemies, really. I know, I'm strange, AF. I'm not sure what's happening, laughy face. LMAO. Get used to that, okay? Seriously, my conscience can hardly keep up with my subconscious intuition half the time, LOL. Do you want me to clarify anything, I guess? No. LOL. Okay, cool. Are males awkward for you? (laughs) You're seeming kind of reserved. I'm just kind of, like, meaning to be friendly. If you can trust that coming from a male, particularly a Facebook male, I don't know. Anyway, I'll leave you be, I guess. Take care. Feel free to unfriend me if you like. Nothing personal will be taken. No need to be confused or anything by me. Unfortunate as it may be. Lonnie, may I give you a suggestion as a libertarian chick? Chill. It's fine. Taxation is theft. Shit, I'm as chill as they come. I was just trying to chill you, LOL. Just being caring. I am very intense compared to most, though. But it's not my normal kind of. Uh, ain't no thing. To each his own and to each his bones. Wink. Tongue. <laughs> A few days go by. Specifically for you, my favorite narcissist and narcissism expert. Sends video. Narcissist victims deceive themselves. LOL, JK. Is that supposed to be a dig at me? It doesn't seem very nice to send that to someone you don't know. What can I say? (laughs) I'm not always nice. LMAO, wink, tongue, heart, peace sign, mind blown (laughs) emojis. Let's call this part of my getting to know process. (laughs) Wink. That was a good one. Thank you. You cannot reply to this message. (laughs) I blocked him, but I unblocked for this particular (laughs) event we're having. I'm going to need you to, like, I need to... Oh, be- here we go. Yeah. This is- 
Uh, I need you to, you know, really emote on this a little okay. more. I need you to just like in the voice that you're actually responding, because I know you're not like Trisha's personality is not. Uh, no I'm so thing. passive and no. demure. Right. <laughs> Kurt. Oh. oh right. okay. I almost said it. Um, Curtis the corn dog. <laughs> 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 I think you just better give me some sugar. <laughs> Creep me out. No. Oh, wait, no, no. You we got to start over. We got to start over. I think you better just give me some sugar. Oh. Uh, Hashtag pony up the sugar. Ha <laughs> ha emoji. <laughs> Hello. That was Thanksgiving sugar. Now we're, now we're into uh, Christmas time here. No. Hello. I need some Christmas sugar. I have a warrant, and I'm shaking you down for some sugar. Wink, heart emoji. Few days go by. Night, night. Fox sleeping emoji. <laughs> Another few days go by. Give me some Thanksgiving sugar. I want one. Wink, 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 wink. Hashtag pony up the sugar. Few days go by. Pony up the sugar flow. And then a photo that... Of himself. Of himself... With masking tape on his face, he's a boomer. Masking tape on his face, or band aids, or something. And there's a woman, clearly his wife, in the background, <laughs> washing dishes. Give Papa some sugar, please. Comply now! <laughs> exclamation! Exclamation! Another few days go by. Curtis is waving at you. Oh, sh I shouldn't have said his name. Hashtag pony up the sugar. Just do it. And then a video of his dog eating a bone. <laughs> Trisha, I've got a warrant. I'm here to shake you down <laughs> for some sugar. You know what I'm thankful for? Hashtag pony up the sugar. Hashtag get some. Hashtag abolish the NFA. <laughs> what the f <laughs> What is the NFA? You can swear on my... No. Uh, is that the not most what the flirt thing you've ever seen? <laughs> what the flirt? <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> that one was really something. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the reactions. Um... Let's go to the reactions from the... Uh, the so our, our buddy Matt writes, the scariest pirate is the one firing all of the cannons. <laughs> well, that completely correlates to what you just read. Um, Karen writes, I started responding to Waves. I send them a gif of Kathy Bates from Misery. <laughs> Apparently, Waves are not the thing you're supposed to do. <laughs> I was told before the show. Um, Matt correctly identifies this guy as, that guy is a masturbator, LMAO. <laughs> <laughs> Gil writes, holy crap, exactly. <laughs> uh, that guy sounds like Austin Powers on Xanax. <laughs> kind Xanax? of, yes. I love Xanax. <laughs> Gil correctly identifies as our last, uh, our last guy as a man who really likes sugar. <laughs> he does. Um, He's probably, this guy's full diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's one. This is just out of nowhere. December 12th is waving at you. And I don't act like the immature boys you have dealt with. The end of conversation. <laughs> Beginning and end. <laughs> Why would you start your conversation with and I don't act? Oh, here's one. Okay. This is one that oh. I didn't I just read and didn't respond. I don't want to say that word. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um The word is the keyword for uh, a, a smear against our LGBT friends. Beautiful peace sign. Few hours go by. Sorry, looks like you already found a cue. <laughs> <laughs> Are you supposed to like get turned on by that? I or? don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Any one of these will really <laughs> seems funny. Is, was there one from a girl that you had up? Um, oh, I was probably not trying to sell me something. Yeah. So this one's kind of funny because <laughs> I you didn't respond, but let's hear what you normally say when you get a message like this. Yes. Hey, Trish, I know this is weird because we don't know each other. I saw your profile and my suggestions. I'm booking Saturday night epic events on Facebook. If I could help you earn some free products, some effort will be required. Would you be open to that? If not, totally cool and happy holidays. I'm not really interested in making money, but if you're interested in being poor, I have this one really cool solution to it. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at being poor. <laughs> uh... Well, that's not bad. That's, no, nice. that one's not too bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Read it. Look at the name, too. I know. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. January, we'll call him. 
I like what you post. Don't worry. I'm not going to b- b- bombard you with day- D.I.K. pics or ask creepy stuff. Not here for that. Thanks for your support against Gillette. Women I speak to don't have a problem with the ad. Man. Oh, that was from my um, I Could Use Some Toxic Masculinity shirt. That went viral. That actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's our sugar buy. <laughs> that's our sugar guy. Um, lots of waving, uh, sup sexy. Lots of you're pretty. Like, do you get told you're pretty so often that you eventually just got like that's a uh, that's a kind of compliment that doesn't even like if somebody says to you, you're just like that's so easy. Well, I would say it's a nice thing to say. Every girl likes to hear it, but yeah, it's just you know. Right. Is this a good one? Maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is like passive aggressive. Okay. Yeah, Mr. January 6th. Oh, right. by January, I when I decided to go like public profile this summer and stuff, by January I started getting sassy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> X is waving at you. You don't scare me off. You're not getting a wave, Walter. <laughs> don't even want a wave. I want you. <laughs> Face palm. <laughs> Face palm emoji. <laughs> what do you think of that? Give me a chance. Teach me some German. Nine. Why not? Am I that ugly? <laughs> I'm going to archive this now. Have a good day. Okay. Be better with you. <laughs> that was good. Am I ugly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, let's go look and see if he's he? ugly. Let's go look, check out Mr. Uh, January. Mr. January here. Oh, he... He, he is he a sales for, specialist at Lowe's. <laughs> he does work for, um, you know, he he was very handsome in 1980. <laughs> Wait, is, yeah. Uh, oh, I think oh. people would know who this oh is. Oh, my, yes. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know who that is, don't you? Uh, I have a vague idea. Oh, <laughs> Don't if you're a celebritarian, don't send me nasty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't nasty. I have weird. seen, um, I have seen a video of him speaking. This guy's okay. He just sends me yeah, okay. stuff. Okay. Uh, calculate this. Okay. Uh, lots of waving, waving. That's a actually. No, that's that's like a. That one's nice. Okay, yeah. that was polite. Cute, cute guy. Just saying hello. Um. Okay. Okay. Go. We're g- so I do get um, which I wish I could find the archives of the, my flat Earth um month when I fell into the flat Earth algorithm, <laughs> and I dropped a couple friends in with me, so I want to apologize for that. Um, I did get flat Earth proposals, and it's also tied into this religious thing. And because I'm a practicing Christian, I assumed I they had assumed I was so. Um. I don't know if this is actually copy paste. I think he might have taken the time to write this. It may be copy pasta, but this looks without any of the. uh, There's literally not one punctuation on here, and it's a solid paragraph. So I'm just going to have to do a dramatic reading as if I were reading the Bible. Okay. Okay. Chris, and we can all learn, and then these are your actual beliefs, or are you reading something? And then you can read those and you can see if there's anybody saying anything of value on there. I am just plain sick and tired of seeing Satan's favorite parlor game being played with such virtuosity here on Facebook or any other social media platform instead of us just being civil and pray for our enemies so they may be overcome by God's word and repent and be baptized and walk in a Christian way of their life. I see we agree on that at least, period. I used to be one that was lured by Satan. This is actually, I don't want to read this. This, this seems, this, gonna, this gets scary. I don't want to read that. I don't want to. You don't want people to know I, that I you were wanna, lured, by, lured by Satan? I just didn't want to have to. There's, but there's more, Christopher. Adam wants to know if you should send creeper messages to me or Trisha. Uh, please, I would prefer them over her. I get none. Um, fingles. All right. Oh, no, that's his friend. <laughs> These all sound like well-adjusted individuals. When a man named Fingles Farr... <laughs> hey, I know who Fingles. <laughs> uh, it was not Wilford Brimley, but he looked sort of like that. Um, Brandon over here, white knighting, saying these guys are weird. I'm sorry. On that's... That... Oh, I let me just say something about white knighting. Uh, no, he's actually being very sweet. Yes, I'm just, because... I'm just being a shit. Yes, yes, you are. I know. I know. 
Uh, go say something about white knighting. So white knighting, um, a lot of times, like um, one of my male friends, I don't think think that I'm stupid or that I can't uh, get my point across. Just say, hey, why are you saying this? Or this is not nice or this. And they like the automatic comeback is, okay, stop white knighting. Just because a guy's nice doesn't mean he's white knighting. Right. He might just be my friend. Maybe he's trying to not have his friend be harassed. Yeah. Um, ooh, Karen's going to send you some mail. Um, hey, baby. Uh, there's apparently a group where women put these messages all in the group. Yeah, I'm not, I don't blast unless it's abusive, so I'm not. Yeah. I'm in, not into that. But yeah, there is a group. Well, uh, Ronnie says hello, Ginger. Well, hello. Wait, who is he talking? <laughs> I don't to? know. I'm a Ginger too. Look at this beard. Yeah. Um, You're more of a strawberry blonde on top, though, yeah. Chris. Sometimes I feel like I'm a loser guy, and then I hear about the brave Facebook message incels. <laughs> it is so true. Mm-hmm. Um. Matt's right. The scariest thought is what did that guy's mother teach him? I don't know. Do you know I do know a Facebook friend that blasts like the moms, if, but if it's really nasty, I, I just don't, I'm not going to get into that. Yes. Uh, just to reset, Jack is right. We should explain what's going on. I'm Chris Spangle. We're here at the Weed of Libertarians podcast studios. We're on Trisha's Facebook page. You all know Trisha. And we are reading Trisha's instant messages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I have some, some good Instagram ones. Uh, that's a flat earth copy pasta. Um, Mike Mac is right. I do send him creepy messages on Snapchat. <laughs> um, the boomer is here. It's Tom Arnold. <laughs> hey, Tom. But your Tom is an honorary like Gen Gen X or, or Gen Z There's no or whatever. Thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. As the official judge of all boomers, I do not let him in. If you don't. Oh, you don't? He's a great guy, but. No, no boomers can escape. Okay, here's the thing. All, <laughs> you're, almost face you're judgment. stuck in the boomer, boomer <laughs> algorithm. So I don't know if a lot of you probably are familiar with Chris, but um, he has started a boy ca- uh, a campaign against um, boomers. Uh, so I I so I got tired about four years ago of seeing all these news stories about. Uh, the millennials have killed Hooters. The millennials have killed that. The millennials have, you know, and it just was always like this condescending, er- er- like arrogant tone towards millennials. So I started making fun of boomers. Hat tip, Sean Latterdale. Please listen to this, Sean Latterdale, who is so anti-millennial. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so it, there's no reason to be. And then, you know, I started to really think about it. I was like, you know, the boomers have saddled us with all this debt, perpetual war. Mm-hmm. You know, they voted in all these people who... Uh, have have spiked the debt. You know, the greatest generation, when the last greatest generation president, Bush, left, he had he left essentially the first boomer president a balanced, they had a balanced budget mm-hmm. those years. And then, the first boomer president. Yeah, <laughs> I've then, never heard of him referred to as that. Then you get George W. Bush, and, and then it's just all hell to pay uh, for many obvious reasons. You know, and the boomers, not for nothing, but think about how they killed the family, mm-hmm. which is really foundational to a healthy society. The, the and, great society. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. and so, like, a lot of what we're facing now is just the the lack of stable families. Um, and so boomers have a lot to answer for, and they, they, ha- they structured a world in their time in charge that gave them – it was – everything is self-gratification. You know, mm-hmm. like even if you remember, if you're a Christian, like the prayer of Jabez was mm-hmm. all about increasing your your wealth. Like that's just typical boomer everything. Like, <laughs> you're taking just, the prayer of Jabez. R- right. Like they just, it, it wasn't about actually being a good person. It was about getting more money. Yeah. How much more money can we steal from the next generation? So boomers in general, I think, have a lot to answer for. So I just started mocking them and uh, it turned like... I didn't. I didn't create the boomer jokes, but I was definitely on the cutting edge, and I'm very <laughs> proud of that. When I look back on my career, um, and, and I'm really on the cutting edge of hating Canadian geese right now. So I want to say I'm really kind of an innovator. But do you realize, like you hating Canadian geese is almost giving you boomer status? You do know. I don't. You even do care. understand the irony of that, Chris? Uh, but you have you you and I have hung out a lot the last couple of days. It's a genuine hatred. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Like the first, I'm standing out on my porch shooting a slingshot at this goose trying to nest. She's like, "What in the world?" Yeah, but apparently it's not ducks because ducks are cute or ducks, something. Ducks are cute and add something, and they're nice. They don't chase you. They're just like, mah, 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 "Give me bread, give me bread." Mah, mah, mah. <laughs> Geese are just awful. <laughs> I have fantasies about grabbing a goose by the neck and swinging it into the other geese and killing them. All. <laughs> 
Is that should I see someone? Every who, vegan friend that I have that's an anarchist is like, I can't talk to this. No, let's see your vegan friends eat a goose. No, they're gross. <laughs> they are, and they poop a lot yeah, everywhere. Like middle aged mm-hmm. men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that a thing? Yes. Oh, middle aged man poop. It's huge. <laughs> Which is why I'm a cougar and I only date younger. That's right. I don't need any big poop. No. If you've heard any uh, of cougar attacks here in the, in the Indianapolis area this right. weekend, Trisha. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I think we it was very enjoyable reading um, some of these. Maybe I'll try to find one before we go. But I think we had, we're had we going to talk about some of the stuff that's going on right now um, in the liberty movement. Mm-hmm. I was actually on Enemy of the State yesterday, and we touched on this. And we talk about this a lot because, as I said in, earlier, Chris kind of um, doesn't identify as an anarchist. Mm-hmm. He calls the show We Are Libertarians because he's bringing people over to the movement. Um, so we talk a lot about pre- being a pragmatic libertarian. I myself do identify as an anarchist. I am involved in the political process somewhat. I do have a certain way. I, don't, I won't vote in certain ways and things like that. But I use it as a platform kind of like Ron Paul did. And we were talking about people in the movement and what do you, particularly you were talking about people that were so hard lined that they're driving people away? What yeah. would you describe like that person? Who would that person like, be? I, I refuse, even though um, like if if human beings weren't and if they were not valuable, sinful creatures who just can't get their stuff together, like if you could design a perfect society, I think voluntarism is is the right way. Anarcho capitalism is the right way to do it. Right. Um, that's really what, at the end of the day, when I give the solutions, I, I look at it from a framework of a private society. I think a lot of anarchists, if they listen to the show, would go, yeah, that I totally agree. But I refuse to call myself an anarchist. Mm-hmm. And the reason is that uh, having been around libertarians for about a decade now, I just uh, find most of the anarchist crowd to be too hardcore for my taste and off-putting and if you're trying to do a show that appeals to newer libertarians like we have anarchists on the show you met Mm -hmm. mike mike last night um harry my permanent like harry's here every tuesday with me he he's so anarchist he won't even say he's an anarchist that that type um but i just find it to there there to be a touch of cultish behavior Mm mm-hmm uh, within some of the people that call themselves anarchists, and the second you declare that you are an anarchist, a voluntarist, an agorist, you're now beholden to that person's version of what that means. Which is and, true to any type of um, belief system. Right, and then all hell breaks loose with a person who genuinely has sometimes temperament issues. And I, and I don't mean to associate uh, the 90% with the bottom 10%, but that that ten percent is so vocal that it really turns you off from ever wanting to identify yourself with a mm-hmm. particular group, and I think there are some people within the, what I what I jokingly call the black and yellow crowd that don't have a lot going on, and they're the soul they have turned anarchy into a religion for them. It's the sole part of their identity, and so if you disagree with one part of their identity, it's a personal attack, and you mm-hmm. just and, and I don't think that this is just. Uh, I'm sure there are some weird Bill Weld supporters out there who acted the same way, or there are are Republicans that are like this. A mm-hmm. lot more Republicans than than you know people within our own movement. But you know, I'm very much a let's take a look at how we can in our movement work together better. And I say these things uh, to to try and get people to think about like how they engage with others, like. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that I'm nice to everybody. I don't get along with Joshua Smith. He doesn't like me, and it's and it's Josh, vice versa. If you're watching this, what's going on? Uh, it's Josh. <laughs> I have never said anything about Josh that isn't uh, about his political actions and his political campaigns, right. and he can't take that. Uh, he has temperament issues, um, and so there. You know, I'm I'm I can be critical of other people, but there comes a point where it's just like I see. Like when Hody goes on and debates Larkin Rose mm-hmm. on voting, Hody genuinely just wants to close down his Facebook. Yeah, I know. He, That's why I turned all that stuff off for a while. He's just terrorized. He, can't, I mm-hmm. think you you moderated it, and like you just you talk to Hody, and Hody is just terrorized by a group of people who can't hear a difference of opinion. Like I really respect Larkin Rose. I think you know he is a very intelligent person who has a lot of important things to say. 
the anarchist wing of the libertarian movement plays a very important part in keeping people like myself who go out and talk about current events grounded in that pure philosophy. But when the the um, the leash doesn't extend the other way, when mm -hmm. a hoodie can't debate a Larkin Rose because and people will just stop engaging people like yourself because they don't want to suffer through two weeks of DMs that are absolutely mm -hmm. you just had a friend who just deactivated their Facebook page. Right. Because the there are pieces of the of the people that identify themselves as anarchists that are just violent. And I think that Jeffrey Tucker took so much shit over the the beautiful anarchy versus brutalism article mm -hmm. and the guy nailed it. And instead of like taking that criticism from somebody who worked at the Mises Institute and has done so much for the libertarian movement and take instead of taking that as a piece of constructive criticism to examine how we do business as a movement, it turned into really the birth in some ways of the libertarian alt right. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the people that I met through those brutalist groups that I that I was kind of lurking in, I now see them as the guys who are saying a lot of really anti Semitic stuff. And so they're the reason I don't call myself an anarchist, even though I closely identify those beliefs, is because of the behavior of a small vocal minority of anarchists. Yeah, and I would like to say to that point, um, because I am, I do identify as an anarchist, but from a little bit different perspective. I would just say being female, and I'm not an abrasive person, so I don't deal with it the same way. Um, <clears throat> I don't. That doesn't give off the same, you know, tone to people that maybe are just coming over to liberty. Right. Um, I have some really awesome anarchist friends who are not assholes at all, <laughs> and are really kind to people that are interested. And mm -hmm. I would say that Larkin definitely treated Hody with respect. I mean, he was totally. hardcore. He's a respectful person. Yeah. And so there were a lot of people that Hody did make friends with, and it's actually become over to be a voluntarist. Um. So those good people just aren't as loud as those idiots you, that are hardline. You, you shouldn't <laughs> get Facebook messages like this. Yeah. And and I'll tell you that the, the women that work on We Are Libertarians may get some creeper messages, but it's nothing like what you get. Yeah. And it's it I have just noticed over the last decade that when when friends associate with a certain segment of the of the movement, they take so much more abuse than people who actively avoid that piece of the movement. The right. women that are involved in wall don't really have the kind of abuse that you go through. And that is concerning to me and that should make every person who identifies in in sort of, you know, like libertarian agorist, voluntarist, anarcho-capitalist, you know, that should make where's the self-policing? Mm -hmm. Like at what point do do people who really want to be proud of those labels start stepping up and saying this is fucking bullshit. Don't talk to Trisha or Hody or other people like this. Get the fuck out of our group. Like, get out. And I think we've actually seen a little bit of that lately. So a lot of the um, the anarchists who are more peaceful minded or maybe a little bit more open to talk to people and not like just try to drop some heavy, yeah. you know, oh, age of consent question in the first group. That yeah. We're growing because we're more reasonable and we're drawing people when, in. I'm sorry, but when you have an incident like you had uh, within the last month, and I don't mm -hmm. follow this stuff. You're really kind of my last connection to it. Um, you have a guy who goes on Facebook Live with his daughter talking about their love, and he gets called into the police, and you have somebody that is, that is running for president that says... Which, Why side note, Dan did step that back. Right, says... Why, why would you use the f force of state? Like, do you not realize what world we live in? Like, well, at what point do you have some humanity for the child mm -hmm. in that video that's crying? And the tool available to you at this point is the it. criminal justice system mm -hmm. that is in front of us. Like, I'm not, I'm not happy about that. Trust me, I'd love to have a hit squad. Yeah. To, like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd love to have the anarcho hit squad to take care. Like, I've got a list of people, um, <laughs> including geese, because. Because true justice doesn't exist in the mm -hmm. current setup, in the current environment. You know, and, and like we just did a show on domestic violence where you, you have two hours of here's how the state has failed women who are in domestic violence situations. Oh, majorly. But that's our remedy in a lot of ways at this point. And so to call the people that called the police on a man that is hurting a child some sort of heretic, that's bullshit. And, and I just wonder why... 
in some of these crowds, it always seems a, a very, again, a very small minority of it seems to end up at predatory behavior towards children or women, uh, anti-Semitism, r- very racist statements. And you go, what is it about the way that the ideology is currently presented or the way that we're gathering people in sort of the hardest, hardcore parts of the libertarian movement? Why are we allowing those people to exist in some of those lanes? Well, uh, like I said, two prongs there. I think there is a movement. Um, the people of us who are reasonable, like say a Jeffrey Tucker, and, and all of us are imperfect. I mean, we've made really stupid things that we've had to backtrack, but we're growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then those other people are getting smaller and smaller minorities. And I think my friend Luis said this, and Luis is an anarchist, but he's not the type to, yeah. in fact, he's even worked with the LP before. Um, he goes, everybody's going to find a conduit for hate. There's a small amount of people in the world that hate. For some for some people, maybe they're into philosophy, so anarchy is their conduit for hate. Yeah. It, it's not necessarily that they're even passionate about it. Yeah. They're, they're, this is the thing they found. I mean, they could have found, you know, neo-Nazism, fascism. What It doesn't really, but this they just happen to find it. People that are into philosophy and think about those things generally are young men in their early 20s, and maybe they've latched on to this. Yeah. And I, this not, that's, I hope that doesn't sound like a no, sexist but thing. Vi- I think violent, let's be honest, it's men. Yeah. It is men. And, and there's... There's no shame in just saying it, but I think we have to speak and we have to understand why are why are people led to sort of that violent behavior, you know, not maybe not physical violence, but right. just violent rhetoric. I used to have somebody on the podcast that was just is in, in Antifa now, like just Good that Lord. sort of that sort of person. You heard it here, folks. No, they were an anarchist. <laughs> they were a voluntarist. They were the really? first person who told me what the term of agorism was. That's what, like and, Stephen and, Molyneux. How the hell did he go from like? If <laughs> listen, people who have been around for a long time knew who Chris Cantwell was. Mm-hmm. We I always too, knew. Yeah. We always knew who he mm-hmm. was. Like long before you were even a libertarian. Mm-hmm. People like I have never promoted Stefan Molyneux stuff. I run libertarianpodcast.com. dot com. He is not on that website, and I built that four years ago. And it's because of I. you just engage in his content. You know who he is. Mm-hmm. Like, you just get it. And so I just think that libertarianism at the end of the day is incompatible with violent rhetoric, with violent attitudes, with, with hatred as the leading value, as, as violence towards something. I think, you know, we do a poor job across the spectrum – um, in terms of explaining how we would build the world, if we it, it's we're so anti-state that we never really start articulating what it's going to look like when the state is gone. And what I try to do with my show is not so much like there is a lot of state hating, but at the end of the day, it's how do we interact with each other? How do we change our hearts mm-hmm. to get to a place that if the government collapses tomorrow, which could happen at any moment because of the way that it's oh, run, oh for sure. How do we pick up those pieces and build a free society? Mm-hmm. How do we interact with each other? And and it starts with love. It starts with empathy. It starts with treating each other with respect. It's and and rejecting the people in our movement as you know, rejecting people like Chris Cantwell long before it's popular. I've taken a lot of. I, I'm coming on probably the uh, one of the most prominent anarchist shows bashing. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying a lot of things that I'm sure the comments. And you're my fun. friend, so I right. won't let them hate on you. <laughs> no, you can let them hate on me. Okay, I, I hate like, on him. <laughs> I'm, I like to provoke for the sake of trying to get people to think and to move in a different direction. And I want to be proud to say that I'm an anarcho-capitalist. Right. I want to be proud to say I'm a voluntarist. I will not take that term because the movement hasn't cleaned up their own at this point. Okay, then. Since I'm 29, I have a lot of years left on this earth. I know. Yes. So I hope that we can get to a point, and I'm going to work, and I'm going to bust my butt to make sure that one day you can call yourself an anarcho-capitalist and be proud of it. And and Michael Heiss and the Mises Caucus and the people that are involved in the Mises Caucus have been something that I have hoped for in the Libertarian Party for a very long time. Um, I am a more conservative-leaning libertarian. I think that libertarianism is clearly a right ideology. It, mm. it, it is. Uh, there's just, you can, <laughs> wow. You just, you'll figure it out eventually. It just is in more, what, closer the, to the right the, camp. Not the initiation of force, no initiation of force. I think oh, if is you're that right? talking about a pure right left spectrum and you're talking about. There's no such thing as the left or right, Chris. Uh, listen, I'm not going to get into okay. it. Let me make my point. <laughs> um, the, I'm talking about like the Libsocks, 
Like you're all delusional. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not. They're not compatible with right. the, with the with no the not right. trying not initiating violence and then like stealing money to give to somebody else are two different things. Yeah, trying to <laughs> trying to chase after a lot of Democrats as as it is just so you're saying appealing folly. to the left yeah like a lot of that strategy i think just doesn't work i've never seen it work i mean we ran the first pro lgbt governor candidate here in indiana and rupert from survivor mm -hmm. you know the democrat it, 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 the the next gubernatorial candidate in indiana that's a democrat will be the first that supports lgbt rights like that's how f we we did this in 2012 that's how like far ahead and we took a lot of heat from our own people in a red state and you know every single one of those people said yeah uh, in, in the in the like the pride movement said yeah we're gonna vote for you but we can't step out of the democratic party and support a different candidate mm -hmm. and you go okay like you you'll, tried. you'll get they're, they're more part they're yeah. more hardlined on the party than their actual belief yeah. system and so because it's a coalition democrats are a coalition party and Republicans are more of an ideological party. Mm -hmm. You can get more people to to flirt with the libertarian movement if they're Amash fans, Rand Paul fans, you know, even some Trump people. But I really think that hardcore Trump people are just a different kind of statist uh, and not kind of like you can get a, a Paul Ryan fan to kind of vote for a libertarian candidate occasionally. Libertarian light. See. Yeah. And so but doesn't like but the Mises caucus can play an important role in in building a party that appeals to a lot of those disaffected republicans or people who are going to vote in a local election for a libertarian candidate when they're not crazy about their big government and also republican. keeping the party actually libertarian like even yeah, if for all my fellow anarchists we're done to talk about party politics you're just going to have to get over it no but that's the problem is that i disagree with you on oh. that i think that if you're going to be involved in the Libertarian Party, you are inherently violating your principles and as an anarchist. Like, if you want to serve in government, if you get elected tomorrow, you are going to have to vote on a city council or in Congress right. for things that are just inherently against the principles of libertarianism. Well, we talked about that, how I, I would never run for office because I think it's immoral. Right. Um, but I'm not saying I don't support people that do because I just want to get their voices out there. And. I, I think the I don't I vote for people phrase, who I think are going to win. I vote for people to keep ballot access. I vote issue yeah. vote for sure. And I think sure. the Libertarian Party does a huge service in pushing like like issue one in Ohio. That was really important. Didn't mm -hmm. pass, but dang, if we can decriminalize marijuana, um, you know, if we can, if we can somehow some somebody's civil rights are being violated, and we can pass something where the government can't do that. That's absolutely important. There's nothing right. wrong with voting for that. But like voting for Ron Paul, he wasn't going to win. Take no issue if you do that. Right. This guy brought more people over to liberty through party politics yeah. than anybody spouting something on the internet ever did. That's why we have a Ron Paul taxation oh, Steph Vote of Campbell yes. up there. And look, guys, I'm gonna I'm not a Skycloth fan. I do not salute or sing to the Skycloth. But this is Christopher Skycloth over that's, here. That's intentionally there just he's so a troll. Because the second Trisha walked in, she went, Oh <laughs> and it's intentionally there for that reaction. And because I want to I want to provoke people right away so i don't want you to waste your time listening to me i'm clearly not somebody that is I, I could be a lot more successful and a lot more popular if i were the libertarian tommy lauren or sean Hannity. please don't just, ever speak that name in front just, of me <laughs> but the, like the, the the type of person who just tweets out just bullshit taxationist theft right. you know cliches and you I can get a lot of popularity that way this is mittens who's <laughs> who's here uh, I, She's I, an anarchist. I don't like the – there's an impulse right now uh, that is – is has always been there. But like keep the Libertarian Party libertarian is a very insulting phrase to a lot of us. Why? Because it's it does not encourage independent thinking. It encourages uh, the type of thinking that submits to groupthink. I think that if I think that there are some very clear libertarian principles. If you're running for a state house seat in Washington and you're for gun control, like you're just obviously so far oh. away from what libertarians believe that you don't you don't belong here. Like you don't fit in what we believe. But there is a, a, a an umbrella of thought that a lot of people can fit into. Um, you know, I'm a very orthodox libertarian. I'm an open borders person. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time looking at closed border libertarians and saying that they're libertarian. Right. I, I but, quite agree. But it, 
it doesn't mean that I should say to those people that because we disagree on borders and agree on the welfare state, the military, and uh, foreign adventurism, like, it doesn't mean that you don't belong here. And so I think what that phrase does is it, it, it creates conflict between people who should have dialogue because those of us who are open borders can get those closed borders people to maybe come our way, for instance, because the arguments for closed borders, like from Lou Rockwell, is that if a brown person moves in next door to you, the change, NAP, change the culture. The, the, in, the NAP is violated, and you go, <laughs> that on its merits can be argued away. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can, and, but if you say, well, you're not a libertarian, you're not like. I just think that that phrase has been used to beat up on people that we don't like politically, and it's not really fair. Like Nick Sarwark, for instance, is a libertarian. And you may not like him or a lot of what he does, and he's intentionally provocative, and he pokes people, and I have issue with some of that. Like I don't under—I never understood why he got in a fight with Tom Woods in the first place. Right. Like, you know, and I was critical of him on my show, but the Libertarian Party has never been in better shape. Like it really hasn't. And those of you who disagree with that statement haven't been around long enough. Go talk to somebody who is who is a delegate who's been here for 40 years. So I, I can I just interject? Yeah. I don't necessarily, when you explain it that way, I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. What I look, when I look to saying, let's keep it libertarian, I don't like the party espousing things that are anti-libertarian. And so people like Sawark um, saying that we should make normalize something, a certain mm-hmm. behavior. The party has, why would they even say that? Give me an example. Uh, so we should normalize prostitution. No, we should make sex work legal. We I don't should, want right. to normalize prostitution. I agree with you on that. And that right. pushes the right away. Sure, absolutely. Uh, no, I think that the, the push for sex work to be, like, sex work should actually be legal. Like, absolutely, but 100%. I'm not going to promote a soul killing profession. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, it doesn't, make, like, it doesn't make for a healthy society. Right. I think porn in general is part of the reason that men are so afraid of intimacy and so and, and like men genuinely like go talk to your female friends if you're a man um or if you're a female like every female watching this and men and wives if you're watching this and she starts shaking her head you better pay attention mm-hmm. women are tired of being treated like porn stars mm-hmm. and men my age I'm 35 have never had any societal pushback on pornography and so you have women that are treated uh, with too much aggression by their partner or they just don't want to have sex with their partner at all because they'd rather watch porn and their marriages are dying as a result Mm -hmm. and it's because we have gone ways like for 25 years 20 years we've watched porn it's never been challenged it's just changed the way that our our brain functions Mm -hmm. and it's ruining relationships why would I want to promote that right. as a leading value of the Libertarian Party? Mm-hmm. So I have I, I agree with you, and I think there are things like that that we should agree with. But like saying Nick Sarwark isn't a Libertarian is fucking baffling. Like it doesn't yeah. make any sense. By the way, just to touch on something you just said, um, it was so funny because I go, you know, I date a, a little bit, and what I, <laughs> just a little don't bit. slide in her DMs. She's not going out <laughs> with you. Um, and I find that when I go on dates, nobody looks me in the eyes anymore. Right. And I was married for my my twenties, so uh, you know, internet dating wasn't a thing. And you know, I'm sure pornography has progressed quite past then. And I couldn't understand why. I thought, are these all beta men? Or and you said it's because there's too much pornography. Yeah. And when you look somebody in the eyes, then you're speaking to that person, mm-hmm. and that's not like a something that um, men are taught to do anymore. Yeah. So I thought that was an interesting point. So thanks for bringing that up. Absolutely. I think it's something that needs to be talked about a lot more. And I think that um, it's starting to get a little uh, like the the Jordan Peterson movement has kind of, uh, you know, I think some of that is really healthy. And that's why mm-hmm. it's so baffling to see like the New York Times beat up on him. Like women are tired of going out with shit men. Yeah. Like men are not rising to the occasion. They're not being the leaders that they're called to be. And. Somebody like Jordan Peterson comes along and gives them a good framework for mm-hmm. what it means to be a responsible man. And then the culture tries to tear that guy down. And it just, you go, what? Like, we have girl power all day long, and that's great. You know, you can be anything you want, but if you're a man and Jordan Peterson tells you to clean your room, that's bad. That's, <laughs> he's a gateway to Nazism. Like, yeah. there's just. I think there's a lot in society right now that is is alienating men that is causing them to feel disillusioned and 
and disconnected from society and to feel victimized. And, you know, when I talk to people of minority status, they go, well, now you know how it feels. And I go, why would you want to recreate that for the largest mm-hmm. majority in the in the country? That's not healthy. Right. We should all have conversations about rising above the the tactics of alienation and division and start figuring out ways to to get everybody to an equal footing like that. Equality means that everybody has an equal chance. And I feel like society is getting a lot better in a lot of ways. Mm mm-hmm. But we don't feel that way because the media is just trash. Well, they, yeah, definitely. So what they are doing is the optics. So you want to look at something and think it's, you know, the worst t- it's ever been when they're, like you said. And I, by the way, that Jordan Peterson was on that video, that cartoon. Uh, Can yeah. you please t- uh, shout out to what? I can't remember the title Freedom, of it. Freedom Tunes. Just look up Freedom Tunes. Oh, my Tunes, God. Watch it, people. <laughs> Freedom Tunes and Dave Rubin. And Dave Rubin, the, like, it's I amazing. agree. <laughs> it's so funny. It's such... Yeah, and Jordan Peter. Jordan. I know. I know. <laughs> like the Freedom Tunes guy. If you aren't following the Freedom Tunes channel, you totally should. It's hilarious. He does such great satire of the movement, and he's just really like a very yeah. unbelievably talented kid. You will you will laugh out loud at especially at the Dave Rubin one and all the characters that are on there. Um, yeah. So a little bit uh, going to that point about uh, you know what we see and is society getting better. We were talking a little bit about, and I bring this up a lot, kind of my um, change of heart starting to come over to the liberty movement was reading Free Range Kids by Lenore Skenazi mm. because I started to realize that I have these two little children and I thought people were going to like steal them out of the yard and life is horrible and I have to protect them and helicopter right. them. And statistically, she gave out statistics and said, actually, this is healthier and none of that's true. And I thought, well, why would I think that? My parents have taught me that things are so bad now and I look on the news and they're abducting children all the time. And then I realized that that's not really true. It's just what the media wanted me to see. And that kind of started me on my journey. And right now they want us to see everything that's horrible and awful in the world. Right. And um, they're control. you know, the mainstream media is controlling our society right so now. So here are the local news stories that were on my feed yesterday. Um, the five-year-old uh, man in custody accused of throwing a child off a mall balcony. Uh, girl dies after four-year-old brother accidentally shoots her in the head. Uh, step granddad performed coat hanger abortion after raping granddaughter 12. Um, Auburn gymnast, my pain is not your entertainment. And I think that story encap- encapsulates a lot of the problem with the Facebook model, with media in general. I'm a professional web director, and I'm fortunate that I'm not judged on website clicks because that leads to bad incentives. It's a bad incentive uh, to to really set up at somebody's job. You know, I that means I'm going to manipulate your behavior and do things that are unethical to get you to click to my website so mm-hmm. I can not get fired. You know, this Auburn gymnast who breaks both of her legs in a horrific accident, mm-hmm. I refused to watch it and and posted that it was, you know, this is not this is painfotainment. This is the same sort of human impulse that led us to look at torture like go watch rubbernecking hang, hang, basically. Hangings 100 years mm-hmm. ago. Um, and you know, then these, these like local news stations and everybody who posted the br- the girl breaking her legs posts her condemnation of them posting it as if they never posted it in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like we're so stupid that we didn't notice that you posted this and now you're, you're doing this for clicks again. It's always a them. It's right. You know, Oh, those people that I'm like, you are them. Right. <laughs> you're the ones bringing it and to so you're us. Just at a certain point go, what do what do what does this girl breaking her legs or a man throwing a child off a balcony or a brother accidentally shooting a girl or a 12-year-old girl being molested like what social value is there in that mm-hmm. what do you really benefit from knowing those headlines and yet the headlines we should be seeing Nobody wants us to see what is your right. government doing to you? What are they right. stealing from you? What are they taking for you? How many police, how many people have actually been shot by police that were unarmed? Yeah. Do we ever see those stories in no. the mainstream media? No. What's happening in Yemen? No, we're talking yeah. about, you know, Christine Blasey Ford instead. And so yeah. I think we have to be good consumers and we have to start knowing that we can rob those unethical social media directors of their clicks. We can be good consumers and not watch that video not click on that story, and start following th- places like anti-war. Start following mm-hmm. m- brands that actually give us good news. Start in- start encouraging, you know, uh, local, not local media, but uh, like 
smaller independent media like you and I and start robbing people of clicks. Like, I really think every person, when you're on your Facebook page, before you comment with outrage, before you click share, before mm-hmm, because you Because there's like, a serious algorithm. You, there is. You, you are teaching them what they ought to feed to you, and you have to say, is there social value in this? Does this build... Now, if this Auburn gymnast, two months from now, decided that she wanted to tell her story, talk about the struggle, mm-hmm. how she worked through that, the emotions that she went through... There's social val. There's value in that. Mm-hmm. There is a value to the community online, to the people that might see it, and, and an encouraging message from that. But she was not a participant. She was not a willing participant in this quote unquote news story. That means absolutely nothing to my life or yours. Mm-hmm. If the, if this were 1800 and we had no communication lines and she broke both of her legs, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, but the things that do matter, the bombs that we're paying for. The cops, like the cops that are are misbehaving, the I'm gonna bash cops since I'm on your show. Yes. Uh, the, <laughs> the 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 money that gets wasted, the the children that are are killed by a lack of oversight from CPS. The there's we're too busy feeding the machine cheap and easy news like this, and so you can really rob those unethical social media directors of their clicks if you stop commenting stop sharing stop liking stop being mad and stop clicking on the website Mm -hmm. and then maybe some more ethical people will end up getting hired to do it to Mm -hmm. run real news um it's funny you say that because um a friend of mine which i wanted to plug their uh facebook pages but also obviously their news site um the free thought project um, and they do police the police, and that's stuff that we should know about. And, of course, they keep getting shut down with clicks and links. And we, when their pages were taken down, it said because of inauthentic behavior and violating the terms of service and Facebook. Initially, Facebook was supposed to be for us to network with people we know and, uh, you know, here's what I did today and find out good information, and it was a social media. What they've done is just what you said. It's not about being social and finding out information and making friends. It's about them getting the clicks for, you know, yeah. so they've set up an algorithm that's completely against what they initially said was uh, what Absolutely. they were going to do. They're they, trying to they ma- divide us, not put us together. Google doesn't use don't be evil anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's ironic because they use an algorithm to get us to pretty much hate each other and be scared. Um, so we have, we have to get out of that one day. Yeah. How we're going to do it, I have no idea. I did have somebody say, it's refreshing to listen to something for 10 minutes and not yell bullshit. <laughs> Should I have Chris talk more? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. What other topics did we want to talk about here before we... Let me see if I have any questions for you. Oh, yeah, they like your kitty cat, Chris. All right, Chris. So then I guess we might wrap up a little bit, but I want to say you said something that I take very seriously because uh-huh. I'm, I'm a very glass half full person. So you don't like being called an anarcho-capitalist mm-hmm. because it it just, the other people that call themselves, not all, all of them, but a small minority that have a really big voice, um, they don't present it in a, in a good light. So my chart, what that does to me is says, I'm going to challenge myself to make the mo- movement more positive. Mm-hmm. I love the new, um, there's a new social media page. They're on a few different platforms. Meet, positive Anarchy. It, oh, okay. I thought it was Meet Space. I haven't seen that. Okay. Uh, what is that? Uh, it's, a, it's a it's a being libertarian joke. Oh God! <laughs> like five people thought. Yeah, that. I don't really follow being libertarian. <laughs> uh, Lance, Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Lance Keiko. Um, what is it? Positive anarchy. Yeah, which is and they're really small, but uh, things like that. And then my friend Mike Mahiri does Godarchy, which is a really positive. It's from the Christian perspective. The Cato has human progress. Okay. You know, like there. That's a great, like drop some of the good stuff. Yeah, right. To, Set, call them off. Besides, we are libertarians, obviously. Eh, we're not that positive. We just share a lot of memes. <laughs> but like, yeah, but I can learn some news information. Like from human, there. human progress is a great example of the libertarian movement saying capitalism did X, and mm-hmm. here's all the great results. And here's poverty has been slashed in a half since 1990. Things like that. Like that's the stuff that we ought to be sharing. Yes. So I think that's a that's a good note to end on. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to say what I usually say at the end, and that is. I love you all. I wish you grace and peace and fuck the state.